Well, welcome to Flipping Rich. Peter, today we're going to be talking about the difference between off-market and on-market deals, right? What are the difference between the two? What does that even mean? So my first question, what is off-market and what is on-market? Well, it actually sounds exactly the way it is. On-market means it's being marketed. Right? Mm -hmm. It's being marketed by a real estate agent. It's being marketed by another investor. Mm -hmm. It's being marketed by a system like mm -hmm. Zillow. It means the seller has already made a decision to sell the property. Off-market is exactly what it sounds like also. It means the seller has not yet made a decision to sell their property, which by the way, and I know we're gonna get into it, it's all about off-market deals for us as investors. Got it. Well, so, and since we're talking about that, we're talking about on market. Like, I know you said one of the ways um, to sell your market, your your property on market, would be through a, a real estate agent, right? Um, real estate agents use a service called MLS, which stands for Multiple Listing Services. What even? What is the MLS? Like, what is that? Well, I mean, if you think about it, if you're a real estate agent, right, and you're selling a house. You gotta let people know about it, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the good thing for a real estate agent, in reality is a good thing for buyers too, mm -hmm. is there's actually a national service out there and it is called MLS, Multiple Listing Service. And what realtors do is when they get a property listed, they literally put it on this service. Mm -hmm. The key to this, it gets massive exposure. See, if I'm a seller of a property, right? Probably the, one of the top reasons I'm gonna go with a real estate agent as opposed to selling it myself, mm -hmm. it's all about exposure, right? Mm -hmm. There's nothing, nothing at least that I'm aware of, and there really is nothing, at least at this point in the marketplace, that'll give a property more exposure than the multiple listing service. I mean, it's safe to say that once something hits MLS, the world has access to it. Yeah, and and with the MLS too, it, it, it aggregates that information to yep. all the websites, like your Zillow's, your yep. Realtor.com's. I think it's like 78,000 websites it aggregates to. But with the MLS, like when an agent lists a property through the MLS, mm -hmm. does everybody have access to the MLS or just agents or does everybody have access to it? Well, and again, this is why if you want to sell a property and you want to get the ultimate exposure, you have to go through a real estate agent, at least mm -hmm. in today's world. They only have access to it. That's kind of the thing that the realtors have come up with themselves, the board of realtors come up with it, and they monopolized it. Very smart for them, yeah. not too great for <laughs> us as sellers. So the only way to get to the biggest database out there, the mm -hmm. only way to get to the something that's gonna expose your property literally to the whole world is through a real estate agent. And so not only do they have the ability to list a property on there, they're the only ones who have access to see deals that are on there. Man, you know what's crazy? Like used to some of these auxiliary websites like we use as investors, um, we use these websites to kind of get around doing the same thing that the MLS does because a lot of these websites actually did have access to the MLS. What's crazy, and Zillow used to have access to the MLS too. What's crazy is in the last couple of months, they've taken away that access. So not even Zillow, not any of these websites have direct access to the MLS. So you're not seeing what's sold in the last 30, 60, 90 days. Yeah. And that really matters. I mean, it really matters. The price of, of your comps could be completely different, right, as things go up in emerging markets. So yep. <clears throat> that's that's why I love the MLS. And, and I'm not a licensed individual, but if I was going to be, like that would be the reason is just so that I could have complete access, you know, to the MLS. Well, if you think about it, just to piggyback off of that, it's, you know, what the board of realtors, they mm -hmm. protect the realtors, they organize the realtors, they serve the realtors. The bottom line is their client really is the realtor. Mm -hmm. So absolutely, they're going to make that an ex, they built it to this guy ginormous service right mm -hmm. and you better believe it they're gonna make it exclusive as possible mm -hmm. can't say you blame them right oh no absolutely not i mean I, I definitely don't blame them um well so that's an on market deal right so something you list with a real estate agent also an on market deal too i would kind of consider something from for sale from a home like from another wholesaler Mm -hmm. Would you consider that on market? Yeah, absolutely. See, a lot of times people do not distinguish off market to on market based upon its very strict definition. But the very strict definition literally means 
Off market, I'm not selling it anywhere. On market, I'm selling it at least in one place. And you're absolutely right. On market to me, and really mm -hmm. to anyone in this business who knows what they're doing, on market means I got a wholesaler mm -hmm. trying to flip my contract. I uh, just stuck, stuck it on Zillow to do a for sale by owner, right? Mm -hmm. To me, on market, even if I just put a sign outside my house, to me, that's on market. So it really starts at that very initial decision. Has the seller made a determination to sell it and have they gotten proactive about it? Mm -hmm. And the thing about, here's the real the, the issue for us as investors. Now remember, obviously to the seller, it's all about exposure, right? Mm -hmm. But to us as investors, it's kind of opposite. It's like we want as little exposure to the deals we're going after, right? Kind of the downside to being on the market to us as investors any longer before it just wasn't that many powerful websites, yeah. right? I mean, like when I got started a couple of years, a couple of decades ago, Julie, like literally, mm -hmm. there were sites and their exposure was Atlanta, Georgia. Like that's it, it just encompasses. Or remember Georgia. when real estate agents used to carry books around? Like there wasn't even in the internet, like anything yeah. that was listed, yeah. they had these books and they would go around to all the brokers and bring their books and yeah. be like, here's the houses that are for sale. That's exactly right. Now, click of a button, even mm -hmm. if I'm not a real estate agent, even if I'm an owner, mm -hmm. click of a button, I get it on something like a Zillow, the world, literally the world has access to it. Which is crazy. <laughs> well, well, th well, this is another reason why we're so adamant, and you know this, we're so adamant uh, when we're doing deals, right? And we're, we're partnering with people, we're so adamant about steering them away, away from on-market deals. Here's the other thing, you know, here's the real question. Well, if, 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 if you wanna stay away from on-market deals and you wanna go towards off-market deals, why does everybody go like, and you know this, mm -hmm. what's the beginner investor always do, right? They always go to the on-market deals. Well, it's, it's easier. It's easier. Mm -hmm. That's the bottom line. It's well, just easier. Then if it's easier, right? It, they've, you're seeing everything about the property. You're seeing the pictures. You're seeing the comps. You're seeing this. Why wouldn't somebody that's new or why wouldn't you want to look at on-market deals? Like, w why would you want to not do that? Well, it goes back to the previous answer you just gave about showing up to, to sellers' houses with books yeah. right, of, of, of listings. The bottom line is this. Anytime something goes in a market now, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Again, I don't care if it's through a realtor, mm -hmm. which is extremely powerful. I don't care if it's for sale by owner, which you have Zillow, which is extremely mm -hmm. powerful. Reality is this. With today's technology, anytime something goes on the market, it gets immediate exposure. And what that means is if I'm coming in as an investor on the property, whether I saw it on Craigslist or I saw it on Zillow or I saw it on Realtor.com or a Realtor brought it to me off MLS, mm -hmm. because I know the power of those sites and because I know that once something hits any of those sites, mm -hmm. like literally hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people see it, and if hundreds of thousands of people see it, and by the way, in those hundreds of thousands of people, if not millions of people, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of investors. And if they've all seen it and they've all passed on it, why am I going to be the last guy standing with the, you know, at, at the door? You're like, this is a super good deal. Even though a thousand people <laughs> done said that this is the best property ever. It's exactly what that is. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. exactly. So that's why you got to stay away in today's marketplace. Again, mm -hmm. in my days... You know, I, I tell this mm -hmm. to people all the time. You, I, I know you've heard me share this with our partners. I used to buy hundreds of properties in the market. And people always tell me, well, Pete, I heard you talk and you've bought hundreds of deals in the market. Why can't I buy? Well, because to me back, to, well, not to me, the, to the world back then on the market still meant pretty exclusive. Yeah. Like the exposure of these deals was Oh, it wasn't small. there because really Zillow and all that wasn't even around when you started. It was, it was not, not giving your age out, well, but Zillow <laughs> wasn't around when you well, started investing. Technology moves <laughs> quick. That's my only comeback to that. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so we've defined find what what on market is I mean what would you consider off market to be well off market is exactly that the seller at the time you're contacting the seller they have not made a conscious decision to sell it or if they have made a conscious decision to sell it they haven't done anything about it yeah and so really what that means so here here's really the breaking line the breaking line is they haven't accessed one of these public places. They mm -hmm. haven't accessed Zillow. They haven't accessed a, a, a realtor to stick it on MLS. They haven't accessed Craigslist. They haven't given it to a, 
a, a, a wholesaler who's got, by the way, wholesalers have access to all of those. So off market literally means there has been no nothing public made about this particular property going in the market. Mm -hmm. And in today's marketplace, since we're obviously talking from a standpoint of a real estate investors, mm -hmm. all the action, everything is all about going deal after deals that are literally, literally off market. Yeah, you know, and I would think that that really that's one of the biggest struggles when when we we're working with people and they're just getting started because it just it really doesn't make sense. I mean, like you said, the first thing you do is you want to go to an agent or you want to go to Zillow and find deals. And here's where you get caught up when you're looking on that. So or you get it from another wholesaler is generally you'll see they'll give you, let's say, a flyer. Or you might see a flyer online. <clears throat> and it's saying ARV is what? The after repair value is this. Purchase price is this. Rehab is this. And maybe even the rental, um, the rental amount is this. This is all the information mm -hmm. that you need to determine if it's a good deal. Problem with that is, is what, Pete, what's normally when you're seeing these deals the biggest mistakes when you're, you're looking at these flyers or you're looking on the MLS. I mean, what's really the issue there? Well, first of all, let me give you the big picture answer. Okay. And, and again, I'm going to go ahead and reference my age. I've been this thing for two decades. I have. I don't know if you have. I've never seen a flyer that has bad numbers on it. Me neither. Just, <laughs> so the reality is, reality is, the biggest problem with these is most of these numbers, unfortunately are not 100% accurate. Yeah, not because they're trying to lie. Maybe they don't even understand, you know, That's comps. exactly right. Or... They, well, because in real estate, there's no standards like that, right? Mm -mm. Like if you're an engineer and, and you're building a stadium or you're building a house, there's standards, right? Like a certain angle is a certain angle, right? Certain mm -hmm. dimension, a certain dimension. When you're doing real estate and you're putting a flyer together, if you're like a wholesaler, nothing is going to put... There's some general things like don't comp, don't compare your house with a house six miles down the road. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But that doesn't mean you can't compare it with the house across the street. Oh, wait, but it's it's twice as big. Oh, mm -hmm. you can't do that. So bottom line is because there are no real set industry standards, it is very easy mm -hmm. to be misled by things like flyers and things that are coming to you that oh, way. Oh, Lord, let's talk about rehabs, mm. right? So like you'll see it on there a lot of times it'll yeah. be like oh this rehab's 30,000 or this rehab's $40,000 based off pictures and things and yep. not necessarily all the time is a a wholesaler right or even an agent or they actually getting rehab bids. You're looking at pictures or you're actually looking at the house and you're like okay that's about that 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 cost about this much. But even me and you seen thousands of houses we don't catch everything in inspection either. I mean, there's bad, ele the electrical could be bad, the heat and air could be bad, they could have structural issues, it could have termites. Yep. Right? Yep. So, I mean, talk about that a little bit, like when looking at things on market, when people say, oh, it only needs $30,000 worth of work. Sure. Well, look, this is the way I look at it, and here's the reality of it is. It's not their responsibility. No. They're not buying that house. No, it ain't their right? responsibility. It's not their responsibility. They're not buying their house. It's their an opinion, basic, I suppose. It's yeah. their opinion. You know, and, and you and I have wholesale plenty of deals. And yeah. you and I both know that when we're fixing and flipping, we're doing a lot more due diligence on the rehab than if we're wholesaling a deal. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because we, here's the other thing. And, and by the way, there's nothing wrong with that. No. There's nothing wrong with that. Because for a lot of factors, one of the biggest factors is so when you're wholesaling a property or when you're presenting a property to someone else, I don't know what that person's going to do. Like you and I, in our world, may spend 30000 fixing it. And you and I both know a $30,000 rehab to someone could look at that exact same property and say, you know what, that's really a 60, and, and neither one of us are wrong. Yeah. Yes, we could do a $30,000 rehab, bring it to this standard, and this individual could do a $60,000 rehab and bring it to that standard. Or even less. What if, what if the back-end strategy is not to buy, fix, and sell? That's right. What if it's to buy, fix, and rent? Right. That's right. In that case, maybe you're not spending the same kind of money. You're not having to meet certain criteria. So what's the big deal? Um, you know, just getting everything rental ready because you know it's turnover with carpet. It's turnover with flooring and paint. 
<clears throat> so using that high quality paint, using that yeah. high quality flooring may not be something you want to do. So, I mean, I guess you're right. It's really all in the eye of the beholder and what you're doing. Well, and this is another reason why we teach and why we partner with people and we show them how to get off market deals. Mm -hmm. Because when you're getting on market deals, you kind of have to go with whatever that other person brings to you. Meaning, if somebody's bringing to you a deal, let's say I'm a wholesaler and I put a property under contract for $80,000, right? Mm -hmm. And when you and I go through our whole due diligence, no, that doesn't work with 80,000. It works at 60,000. We're stuck because you have it tied up for 60,000. Whereas in the in a off market scenario, you and I control the deal. Mm -hmm. all the way from the get-go, all the way from negotiations, and know that an $80,000 deal mm -hmm. should never be bought. It's all about off-market deals. Absolutely. Um, well, I love this discussion of on and off-market deals today. Thank you for joining us on Flippin' Rich.